welcome to B Size Newcastle. Th thank you for coming and I'll take it away. Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for having me. This is the first time I'm talking at B-Side, so it's quite excited, as well as I'm, I'm a newbie for this community. So if I'd say something that you should normally talk about, just, you know, apologize in advance. But um, Sam and the team, uh, thank you so much for having me here and inviting me for this talk. Today, I'm going to be talking about ticking box or ticking bomb. I first did this talk uh, back in last year, I think, for IC Squared uh, London chapter since then I've uh, modified. So so big thanks again for the Newcastle team. I used to live in Newcastle for a while. <laughs> so I'm very close to the environment and the culture, the people are, uh, I love the people in Newcastle. So thumbs up for joining and all of you joining here today. Thank you. So let's get to the talk. You can hear me okay, right? Loud and clear. Nice. So um, basically, I just wanted to go back to uh, my first slide. So I associate with many brands, but two uh, which are really close to myself is Meta Defense Labs, my company, which I co-founded, and then She Sees Exec, which is a uh, give back platform. A little bit about uh, the agenda. So we're gonna be talking about what I do, hygiene, then tick box exercise, and, and Bit of a rant on some of the challenges and what does good look like and uh, the ticking bomb so i'm not going to go too much around these things but um, we'll get to that so what am i i like to think i can be wonder woman i wonder that wonder this and then sometimes come up with some things that i can help the community and uh the the industry on try and see if I can change the world pretty much <laughs> as you can see um, I have very high expectation when it comes to um, my role models <laughs> and uh, during my daytime what do I do so I work as an IT consultant and I work as a cybersecurity consultant currently my, I'm uh, engaged on a project with Cisco and I also do GDPR consultancy and I'm a cyber essential assessor and I ask me auditor and I said 27,001 lead auditor and a lead implementer. Those are kind of some of the day jobs I do. Apart from that, I also work as a virtual CISO. This is a new thing that uh, I started recently, but I think I'm really getting good at it. It's, it's kind of opportunity for me to consolidate 20 years of my uh, experience in the industry. And I also work as the managing director for Meta Defense Labs UK and Sri Lanka, which I co-founded in 2015. Since then, we've got uh, we've opened two offices. We are a boutique cybersecurity company, and also uh, a authorized certification body for cyber essentials and ISME frameworks for UK government. Annie, I'm really sorry to interrupt you. The yeah. um, the slides are coming through a little bit pixelated, so it's difficult to to read what's on there. I, I don't want you to get further in, and it continues to be an issue. Um, oh right, can you read? Can you read the text at all? It's called blurred, isn't it? Yeah, it's the the rest of it looks really pixelated. Um, Let me see if I can uh, close some of the browsers. Okay, cool. Sorry, it's all right. Yeah, I can see. It's I'm going to stop share for a bit. I've stopped sharing, All right? Okay. Okay, let's try again. Can you see now? That's a lot better than it was, yeah. <clears throat> it's still a little bit blurry, but it's readable. Okay, cool. And we'll edit this out in the recording, don't worry. It's like nothing <laughs> happened. 
<laughs> no worries. So, um, yeah, where was I? So I, what I do during the daytime. So I manage the team here. I get to boss around my team at Meta Defense Labs. They're like my family. I love them. And uh, I'm also a public speaker. I recently did my, uh, oh, that was last year, TEDx talk. And uh, I founded CISO Exec, which you must all know. It's uh, our mission is to create emotionally intelligent uh, cybersecurity leaders. So we have a, we are creating a global talent pool, and uh, we strive to bridge the skills gap, diversity gaps, leadership gaps, uh, and empower uh, cybersecurity leaders in the industry, which I'm going to be talking a bit more about later on. So this is my TEDx talk, which I did last year. I ask you all to watch this and also share, not to promote me, but also to get to get the message around to everyone. It's a message that I want the world to see about why cybersecurity matters and why it should um, we should all be emotionally intelligent cybersecurity leaders. Some of the uh, platforms I was featured on and, and awards and recognitions. And I think uh, self-promotion is quite important in our career. This is not to, uh, uh, I, I learned it the hard way because if you are keeping quiet about not uh, uh, demonstrating what you can do and what you're capable of, people won't know. So it's good to share that knowledge and also let people know that what you're good at. So self-promotion sometimes, um, I think most of the time it's really helpful and I should, I think we all should do that. Also, um, it helps us you to achieve your goals and objectives. Some of the good times we've had last year when we could go out and party and do things. So these are the lovely people in our community. Some of you may know. And, uh, and these are some of the leaders who helped she sees so during uh, our monthly mentoring calls or some people who came in uh, um, on the platform and did some mentoring for all of us. We do this every month on third Tuesday of the month. You are welcome to join and also um, come and speak at the platform as well. Okay. Now, what did we do during lockdown? So we did quite a lot of things. And one of the things was the She Sees Her Boot Camp we conducted during July. It was a five-day boot camp. And these people on the left, are, on the right, are the people who helped us uh, achieve that project. And it was a five-day project. We, we gave 37 scholarships. So Meta Defense Labs was involved in planning and offering these scholarships to people. Most of them were 100% scholarships to individual who wants to get into cybersecurity. There were also people who were already in cybersecurity who, who joined this boot camp. We had about close to 40 people joining for a week from 12 to 5.30 in the evening and teaching and sharing knowledge about cybersecurity, personal development, emotional intelligence, and uh, leadership. And we on the map here, it shows where people joined from. So we. We had uh, participants from all over the, pretty much a lot of the uh, places um, in Europe, UK, Ireland, America, South America, and India, Sri Lanka. And these were the speakers who volunteered for this. So I think we volunteered for about, um, so the whole week, it was about 25 hours. And then to get this event running and prepared, we spent months and months in planning and, and all, a lot of these team um, putting in their time. So that's about She Sees So, and I want you to um, find us on online and join the community. We have a Slack community as well. You can join and collaborate. And uh, so let's back to the topic here today. I wanted you to think about hygiene. I'm really what is sorry. hygiene? Uh, it's still um, any chance you could share the application rather than your screen? If we think that's what might be, it's gone blocky again. I'm really okay. sorry. That's all right. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, you mean the um, PowerPoint application? Yeah, just the application. That might do it. Yeah, okay. Let me just stop sharing. Foibles. Yeah. 
I'm not running any any stuff. I don't know why it's taking. <laughs> Because that's the screen or the application. Because it looks like whether the black boxes are coming up, it looks like you're sharing the screen. Yeah, I'm sharing the screen. Yeah, you should when you go into sharing settings, there should be another option below where you can just share the PowerPoint. Yeah, that's what I was doing before. Weird. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. You want to try that one one more time and just see if that helps. Okay. Oh, I could just try and do the whole desktop if that helps. I don't know. No, it won't help because uh, I, I did that earlier. How about now? Um, <laughs> worse. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. I think Clive's running too many applications here. <laughs> uh, or a second. One. How big's the deck? You could, I don't know if you could just email it across to me and I'll share it for you. Yeah, let me do that. Okay, cool. We've got plenty of time, so it's no problem. Oh, cool. So we're good with time then? Yeah, yeah, absolutely fine. Right. Give me let, one minute. I'll try and reboot this again and I'll join back. Okay. Sure. You you, you do your thing. Um, okay. We'll, we'll keep stuff going until you, until okay. you come back. Okay, sorry about that, guys. No, no, I'll it's okay. Back. You... Don't worry about it. It's no the whole nature of a B-sides <laughs> event, isn't it? It's something will go wrong. Don't worry about it. Uh, Chani, you do you. Do you. We'll keep everything running. Just rejoin. I'll see you in a bit then. See you in a bit. Bye. So while we're waiting on uh, Chani rejoining, I think we should get some Zoom pinions up at 5.45-ish, then a break, and then tonight we have... Miss Lotus Jackalope, Club. Make Ben Do Dares, and Hacker Karaoke. And I believe, I believe, I've heard from a very reliable source that you may be joining this karaoke. <laughs> very possibly. We'll see. <laughs> we, need to, we need to load you up on the booze. We'll send you some gin. It's fine. It's all good. Um, obviously, we'll take that to a close. And Happier will be running an usual spot with a new, totally new people. DM them for the for the creds of that. If you want to keep drinking until nine AM tomorrow morning, and keeping keeping the spirit of B sides alive, everyone should just rock up wearing B sides t shirts. That'd be quite funny. How does it work? The uh, uh, karaoke. Like I've tried karaoke virtually, and it was not a success. So what are you using, like for for tools? I've tried karaoke physically and it's not been a success, so, you know. Oh, I love karaoke. <laughs> it's like uh, one thing that gets me more of my chair than scavenger hunts is karaoke. Yeah, I, as soon as you mentioned karaoke, you did suddenly pop up and spring to life again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, we've got, you know, the basic tools as ever. Um, if you can find a soundtrack without the singing on, or if you just want to sing over a song, that's fine too. Um, or just go for a cappella. I mean, you know, who needs music? We've all got music on our heads. Yeah. We'll together. Um, any musicians on the call? Mm, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I never said Busted. I was a good musician. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Um, no, but there's, there's definitely going to be some karaoke. And when you say, you know, I, I've tried it and it's not been a success... Success is dependent on the people watching, Elis. Um, so if it goes completely tits up, everything goes completely wrong, that's great for the audience. So that's yeah, yeah. We we had like this Zoom call uh, every week with uh, the colleagues. Um, uh, I kicked off uh, the karaoke, and it was like uh, me spinning up the music and like everyone joining in and like. Uh, all starting at a different moment in time, where there was like this. Uh, uh, mind-numbing craziness in my head and it was like I was not able to continue well that, that used to be the party trick you'd sing songs slightly out of time and it just gives you that kind of feel of oh something not right there yeah um, 
But if you're good enough, you can keep it up through the entire song. It is, it is incredibly yeah. fun. I think turning the audio off so uh, you don't care about the others is the trick here. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure we'll find out how exactly that's going to run and how exactly that's going to work. Yeah. What, what time is that? It's a good question. We've got an hour of Miss Jackalope, so that'll be from about six fifteen onwards. So um, Ben do dares. Depends how many dares we have. So uh, uh, at worst, I guess uh, about seven thirty, maybe maybe seven forty five. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Time is waiting. Right, I can see Chan coming back in. Cool. I'll shut up. <laughs> no, you're good, man. You're good. And if anybody's interested, Yulis is running a workshop tomorrow. Uh, what is it? 12.45 BST? I feel like it's one, is that right? One till quarter past four? I don't know, make that up. And that really will be an epic one. Yes, it's... Promoting uh, myself here. Yeah, no, I, I, honestly, I, I love your streams and I love your stuff. So um, you explain things beautifully. So it's definitely going to be worthwhile. If you haven't already grabbed a ticket, go on the Eventbrite link. Um, the Eventbrite link should have been tweeted out. It should also be on the Slack. I think it's also in the description somewhere. Go and register for the workshops. There's only 75, 35 places or 30 something places available. Um, they've been slowly going down over the course of the day. Definitely register, get in there. And it's for the absolute beginner, no uh, knowledge uh, prerequisites. Okay. Cool. Right. Thanks. Hi, Enjoy. Jen. Hello. Oh my God, that's beautiful. <laughs> Is that better? Oh, it's so much better. So much better. Wow. Okay. Oh, Let's... wow. <laughs> okay. That just needed a report then. <laughs> that's what it was. Always the way. <laughs> Yeah, so let's go to the slide that I was on. I'm going to go off camera as well so that it doesn't take any. Can you see it better now? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So today I want to talk about hygiene. When you think about hygiene, I'm sure all you know what basic hygiene is by now, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic. Wash your hands to protect, protect yourself and wear a mask to protect others. I guess that's what we've been following so far. Just two, uh, two simple things. And uh, when it comes to cyber hygiene, what are the first things that comes to your mind? So what do we need to do when it comes to cyber hygiene and protecting our data? Because it's all about protecting our personal data and business data uh, in the cyberspace, right? So if you think about what we are trying to achieve through cybersecurity, our goals, it's, it's come down to three basic things, confidentiality, integrity and availability, which are like your DNAs of cybersecurity. And what we need to look at is, can something cause an, uh, a cause and confidentiality breach, an integrity breach, an availability breach, which is, we can also call it disclosure, alteration or destruction. So here I'm, I'm, I've got about five things which we need to consider. I think every must, one must consider these five things as your basic cyber hygiene. That is to secure your internet connection, securing your devices and software, control um, access to your data and devices, protect against viruses and other malware, and keeping your devices and software up to date. It sounds so simple, but the challenge is, is it really simple? <laughs> uh, I don't think everyone can do, live up to uh, making sure that we comply with these controls. So let's get into what I was gonna talk about today. I don't know if you've heard about Cyber Essentials. If you haven't, I would suggest you Google it. Cyber Essential is a basic framework. 
and it only talks about five technical controls. It was originally introduced and backed. It's a government, UK government back scheme introduced by NCSC and now uh, they have partnered with ISME and it's a certification that everyone or every organization, big or small, must consider when thinking about cyber essentials or cyber, uh, basic cyber hygiene. What it does is it talks about five basic controls. Your firewalls, uh, that is in securing your internet connections, then your secure configuration, which is securing your devices and software, and then user access control, which is controlling access to your data and services. Then malware protection, protecting against viruses and other malware like ransomware we hear about every day. And then keeping your um, patches. Patch management is keeping your software and devices up to date. Why and why, uh, what does it do? So why do we need cyber essentials? Now, these are not my words. These are um, some of the text that uh, NCSC has um, mentioned. So what Cyber Essentials really does is it helps you to get your cyber hygiene and cyber maturity levels up. If you don't even have a cybersecurity policy, this, these are some basic controls that you can look into. It doesn't matter whether your organization big or small, how large it is, you can still apply for this. You can even apply, for, apply this to your home. And if you look at it, what, what does it stop? It's not a risk management framework like ISO 27001 that we all know. It's just a control, a technical control set, nothing else. And it doesn't talk about risk, how you manage it. These are really basic things that you must do, like you, you wearing your, washing your hands, wearing your gloves, and, and wearing your seat belts when you're driving. So those are the basic things that we require. So businesses of all types and shapes can have cyber essentials to protect their uh, uh, company from attacks. And it can also help you to keep your devices and data uh, safe. Also, we, we understand that not every company or organization has specialist cybersecurity teams or IT teams, they have to you know, first think about how do they make business. So these skills doesn't come um, easily to some businesses. So when you don't have that, these are things that you can really look into and apply. And then it goes into um, uh, controlling your access. How, who, how are you uh, going to give access to your suppliers and partners? So if you, if you don't know what kind of suppliers to uh, um, use, then you can probably look at what kind of suppliers has basic cyber hygiene. So this can be used for your supply verification as well. And it's, it's been designed to be flexible, taking into account all sides of businesses. That's why it's, it's, it's really effective when you apply it correctly. But the question is, are you applying it correctly? Now, when you get that certification, so it's easy to get a certification. And once you get it, you can demonstrate due diligence to your customers and suppliers and partners saying that you are actually taking uh, your data seriously. And you can also uh, get listed. That's another nice thing to have. You can um, get your company listed on the NCSE website to show that you are a, a cybersecurity um, certified, a cyber essential certified organization. Why this, this is so important is that now, um, especially with um, COVID, in the past, companies only had maybe one office, few branches, right? So the CISOs or the IT uh, managers and security managers only had to worry about those networks in there. With COVID-19, now a lot of people are working from home. Companies suddenly have thousands of branches now to worry about because thousand people working from home, right? So how do you now manage all that risk if you don't ha even have the basic cyber hygiene? So this is why this control can uh, control set can help you to manage your remote workers. So if you have people working from home, uh, you can ask them to apply some of these controls to their networks as well as their uh, their home networks as well as their devices if they're using their own devices to access your business data. 
and um, have this as a basic hygiene control set. And in added to that, you can also have you know other uh, technical controls like having a VPN set up and things like that. So digital transformation uh, has gone the requirements of digital transformation has skyrocketed now and some of my day jobs is to um, consulting organizations how to how not to do cowboy it because a lot of the time the problems happen because people don't do it properly and if we can apply some of these basic hygiene practices we can reduce some of that risks so how does an organization meet all these requirements so there's three steps um, you have to understand your boundary, the scope, and then uh, go, uh, look at the control set, apply these controls to your uh, in, uh, connected devices. It could, it could be your uh, employees working from home, your branch offices, or anyone who is connected to your network or internet who is accessing your data. And then taking necessary steps to ensure that these measures are applied. Now, with ISO 27001, you can choose your control set often. So that's why people don't really follow that properly, because they can even get ISO 27000 badge for the corner cabinet and say, yes, we got ISO 27001. So in this case, the scope is really important. So I, I always recommend um, applying this certificate uh, framework for the whole organization because if you have users from all over the world logging in to access your data then all those endpoints needs to be secured if you're not providing secured securely built endpoint devices or doesn't have vpns and all these other access control uh, set up then you are depending on somebody else's laptop or internet connection and uh, you don't know who's accessing this, who's looking at this data. There are a lot of risks that come in, uh, come with it. So having this kind of basic controls really help in managing risks. And, and a company can go into a, a certification body like um, us, we are a certification body. And then once they go through this process, then they submit their answers and it gets assigned to someone like me, a cyber essentials assessor, and then we mark it fail or uh, pass or fail. Now, this is a bit of a rant. <laughs> so how does it work? Now, in the industry, I've seen, I've been working with different cultures and different uh, industries. And what I often see is we can't avoid IT anymore. It, it's impossible, right? And, and a lot of the businesses are still trying to reach uh, these kind of basic regulatory compliance and cyber essentials compliance or hy hygiene compliances. And I see there's companies with very advanced risk management approaches, and there's companies who doesn't even have the basics like a security policy even. So how do you now bridge this gap? Because, you know, there's the supply chain and all these big companies could be uh, um, hiring these smaller companies and, and medium-sized companies to uh, provide businesses, services, the government does that. Uh, so everyone's relying on every, each other's services, right? So if you don't, if you have these massive gaps within your suppliers and, and your partners, now can you easily manage your data protection side of things? It's very difficult. So my my uh, challenge now is how do we bridge this gap you know how do we support the companies who has a very low security posture to uh, you know get to somewhere and and that's why i go on about talking about cyber essentials because if you don't have the basics at least get get that in place and and the disappointing part is there's still so many companies treating security as a tick box exercise and it's, it's, a, it's a very challenging thing for us security people because it frustrates us, right? And, 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 and the most disappointing thing is there are so many um, so-called security professionals still enabling that. So as an assessor, I see how so, how so many companies try to um, even cheat this simple framework, you know, submitting, uh, um, uh, sometimes wrong answers and not really properly um, implementing these controls, uh, which I will not go into details, but unfortunately it's still a tick box exercise for many. And, and the sad part, like I said, is 
how uh, the so-called security professionals enabling this behavior. Because the only, um, it, it's, sometimes I, I see that, um, you know, when a company has to bid for a contract or a public sector project, that's when they remember cyber essentials. One of the requirements for public sector is if you're providing services to UK public sector, you must have cyber essentials. So some of these businesses, when they realize, oh, we are waiting for this project and suddenly, oh, we need cyber essentials. Let's go and get it, buy the certificate in 24 hours. How does that help? Because, you know, you're just cheating people, right? In that way, if you're going for a certification just to tick that box, who are you kidding? So this kind of basic control should be your baseline. And for your cyber hygiene as security professionals, we all have a responsibility to apply them correctly to support business resilience. Be proactive so you can prevent things like ransomware. Now let's look at trust. If we don't um, build trust, how do we business? It's, it's all about trust, right? Starting at home to, uh, to work, to community, to your industry, our relationships are, um, good, relations, good relationships are based on trust. But if we uh, try to cheat our way into things, it's only going to get difficult in future. And you will feel this is the certain, uh, feel like this with uh, certain organizations, like if you um, uh, say, yes, this company has cyber essentials, so let's get them as a supplier. And then later down the line, something goes wrong. And then you realize actually, they haven't really applied the controls properly. And that's why uh, uh, this breach happened. I've, I've had companies reach out to us where uh, they, they claim to have a lot of security and, and then suddenly ransomware hit. But what has happened was that the, the controls they claim to say that you they have implemented hasn't implemented properly. So it's really important. I cannot stress this enough that if you want to build trust with other organizations and your community, you need to do this properly, implement these cyber hygiene controls properly. And and when it comes to trust, it's not just that uh, our, all, all our relationships are based on trust, you know, from your partner to your family, to your community. So we need to think about trust, uh, building trust with our peers as well. And that's really important when it comes to being an emotionally intelligent cybersecurity leader as she sees or preach out. And this is how I sometimes feel when I talk to some businesses. Um, you want to feel like you want to go and strangle them because they haven't done security properly and then your EQ kicks in thinking, oh, you can't do that. No, we as security people, we can't go and do the police work or the uh, blame games. We have to enable them. And that's, that's something that we need to practice. Uh, security professionals need to understand how we gain trust. That is helping businesses to uh, bake good security into whatever we do. So secure by design approach is really important in everything we do. And, and, and this is, um, and also uh, convince business owners to think of security as an investment to build trust. I grew up um, in, my, in this industry, uh, learning how to build resilient and secure by design IT solutions. That includes, uh, it doesn't need to be security as a separate element. Uh, uh, sorry, I, um, what I meant was it doesn't need to have security as a separate element, but if you're building IT infrastructures which are secure by design, you then think about these things. You know, how do you enable confidentiality? How do you make sure that data is, uh, it can be trusted, the integrity? And how do you make sure that it's available when you need it to be? Uh, that includes your high availability elements, redundancy, and um, all these aspects, fault tolerance built into your IT infrastructures and backup strategies. All those things has to be considered when you're building proper IT solutions. When you don't have these things, that's where things can go wrong and patching. I cannot stress enough how many times I see people don't patch enough. And I know when, when it comes to large organizations, it's very difficult to keep a 14-day days patching cycle um, 
to you know patch all your devices if you're a larger enterprise but if you build this from ground up with security in place then these kind of practices and processes can be uh, not hard to follow and uh, not just patching software device firmware level to os levels everything has to be patched and using uh, properly supported uh, hardware and software is also crucial now how can we fix this issue <laughs> I see the biggest, the most important thing is leadership. And I'm sure uh, you know who is in this picture, Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes Petronas F1 team, one of my favorite teams. And why I like this uh, is I've, I've shared this on public as it. This is one of my favorite slides. I make sure I try and put this slide in every talk I do because I find it so important uh, and kind of stress enough. Uh, so Lewis Hamilton and uh, Mercedes team won, uh, are the six times were F1 world champions. And on their way to uh, getting the seventh, I guess, <laughs> a few more races to go. Now that's good leadership and uh, at individual level and organizational level. They are one of my favorite teams. Uh, I really admire Toto Wolf, the, the team principal of the F1 team. And uh, some of these uh, points are actually from Toto's uh, interviews I've, I've watched. I believe that good leaders must understand and communicate their vision, strategy, and goals and objectives to every employee in the organization. It's really important. Communicat uh, communication is where we really mess things up. If you don't understand something, how can you communicate? You can't. So it's really important that you understand what we are trying to do, why we are trying to do it, and then communicating that is also crucially important. A lot of the problems happen because of lack of communication. This is something I learn every day in my business and with my customers. If we don't communicate clearly, things can change, things doesn't happen, and, and, and the problems start. Then authenticity, you know, be authentic and honest and open. Leaders can uh, demonstrate a lot of these through being authentic leader, leaders. And I know some uh, in, the, in the past, this wasn't the traditional method, you know. Uh, it, it can be frowned upon if you try to say what you think or, you know, if you try to be authentic at the uh, workplace. But I think authentic leadership is really important. Uh, and also take accountability, take responsibility, admit your own faults. These are really important. Then you're setting a good example for people who, who are following you. And create a no-blame culture. I say it, or um, uh, in here I say, blame the problem, not the person. That way you're creating that, uh, avoiding that toxic culture, blame culture, that can uh, happen, uh, create problems in the organization. Then when you see something, you address it and fix it. So that's why I see it, say it, fix it uh, motto. So in my organization also, when, when we have things going wrong, someone has to say it and, 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 and uh, see it, uh, say it and then we fix it. If someone waited until the things go wrong and then come up with excuses, that's no good because you have to make sure that you get a reason to fix things and then not uh, wait until it becomes an excuse. Um, and then um, EQ. EQ is emotional intelligence. If you don't know about EQ, I suggest you Google it. Invest your time to learn EQ because it's so important in everything we do. Some people it comes to them naturally, some people we don't. Uh, don't uh, uh, so and emotional intelligence, you can learn that. You learn that skill. It's not like where you go on a week's course and then suddenly you have technical skill set. With emotional intelligence, it takes years and months to uh, practice and also be good at it. So more you invest in it, the better you get at, uh, better um, it is for you to understand your own feelings because we need to be able to understand our own feelings and emotions so that we know how to react to situations. So self-awareness is really important. Then understanding how you manage those emotions. So if someone comes and yells at you, are you going to, what are you going to do? Are you going to get angry, sad, upset, cry, uh, or punch them in the face? So those things are the feelings that you have. 
So if you are self-aware, if you can understand the feelings that's going through your head, you can manage how you react to situations. So that's why understanding how you manage those emotions is important. It's called self-management. Then understand others. Try and put yourself in other people's shoes, uh, where they uh, understand where they're coming from. And, and that's called the social awareness in EQ. Then understanding how you can manage those relationships better. So you have this knowledge now. You can understand yourself. You know how to behave. You know how other people feel and where they're coming from. You put you can put yourself in their shoes. You have empathy. And now you can have better relationships because you can communicate and ask, understand why you're doing this, taking time um, uh, to uh, you know, uh, be emotionally intelligent is really important. And especially when it comes to uh, neurodiverse people, it's really important how uh, to understanding your coworkers, you know, how they feel, because not everyone is the same. We are all different. We come from different backgrounds. We come from different cultures. And that's really important. And finally, uh, not the last, at least, uh, the empowerment and trust gives best performance. You need to empower, collaborate and help each other. And that can achieve better performance within teams. Diversity, another slide I've stolen from um, Mercedes. Uh, diversity is really important. I don't think I need to talk too much about diversity here. We've been talking about this quite a lot at GC, so as well as in the industry. Uh, we need diversity for innovation uh, and we need diversity, uh, people from different backgrounds and cultures to fight the various threats and uh, cyber criminals and then um, improve productivity and understand our customers. Then again, uh, EQ plays a big uh, part when it comes to diversity. Next thing, crown jewels. Knowing your crown jewels is so important when it uh, comes to cybersecurity and, and creating a good uh, information security management program. You need to know what you are uh, protecting so you understand the impact of loss or damage, then you can manage it better. Then the, the, uh, the asset management, you'll be surprised how many companies have a good asset management pro uh, uh, programs. Asset registered, asset owners, you ask the questions, no. Uh, then sometimes they have physical asset registered, but do you have uh, data asset registered or information asset registers? I, I bet 50% of the organizations doesn't do that. So it's really important because all our data is in the, in the cyberspace now. Uh, that includes our personal data as well as business data. So if you're not protecting this, if you don't know what your assets are, then how are we going to apply these controls or protect them? So the diamond here is the uh, Cullinan diamond. And it's, it's the largest gem quality rough diamond ever found. I think it's, it's, it's the crown jewels here, they're priceless pretty much. So the Cullinan diamond itself was found in, um, from South Africa in 1905. You can go uh, Google some of these, they're worth, they're worth uh, billions, but I would say they're priceless now. And, and the, the asset owners for this would be crown. Now, skills shortage. So, attracting and retaining brilliance is really important. We need to have the right teams. We need to have the right teams and the skill sets to be able to manage cyber threats and cyber attacks. So, try not to look for the unicorn. I often see job applications where they're asking everything under the sun and you can't find that person. So, no wonder we have a skills problem, right? And, 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 what we say is be open to, you know, have uh, uh, inviting job descriptions and also looking for the right people, the human skills. Uh, and, and making sure your human are the strongest link is really important. Then the awareness. Um, awareness is so important. And I'm not going to stress this enough because we all know as cybersecurity professionals how much awareness uh, can play. Uh, in helping us do our jobs as well as to stop cyber attacks. So I always say cybersecurity is my responsibility, cybersecurity is your responsibility, and cybersecurity is your everyone's responsibility. Data transfers. We are in a uh, we are in a global village, so our data is everywhere. So we need to know um, 
where our data is going. So journey to cloud, digital transformation, supply chains, uh, all these regulations coming in to control uh, how we manage our data. So we need to really understand the, the importance of uh, information life cycle, where the data is traveling to, who's processing them, who's look, you know, uh, transferring them to further uh, uh, third parties and, and making sure that we have the right uh, practices in place to manage this personal data or any, any important data. And also the next one is the AI. Uh, AI and machine learning is here, so we need to uh, uh, consider these technologies. There are so many uh, that associates uh, with AI, and it also helps us to improve our processes, detecting threats and attacks. That you know uh, that uh, AI could do a lot of things in 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 fast ways than humans can do. So, um, but the the other challenge is that. I feel most people don't know what it's doing and how it's doing it. So, and then that's, that is kind of some kind of a challenge with AI. So we need to consider our security practices to adapt to these uh, new technologies that is coming in. And then the future of con quantum computing. Uh, so this is also a, um, you can say it's like the superpower, <laughs> next generation superpower of computing. And at the moment, uh, we don't know uh, or does not have a single status for society, especially when it comes combined with AI, how much powerful it can be and what kind of opportunities it can bring and what kind of threats it can bring. And, 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 and cryptography plays a massive part in this. So when you're designing and building your cybersecurity um, programs, manage, risk management programs, you need to consider these kind of technologies. So, if you don't do that, and if you just go for that tick box exercise, we're only going to have a false sense of security. And it's same with us in personal level. If you're just doing things to impress someone or just to show that, yes, you're doing this, you're going to go for this certification because you want this get this job, but you're not really applying that into getting the experience. Uh, you're just collecting certifications it's just a false sense of you know uh, security or, or a skill set or a, um, a feeling that you will have and it can be a ticking bomb waiting to go off for organizations because if you're only doing it for paper not really applying it then it's a matter of time and you know when things go wrong and I often say have that assumed breach mentality so that means you're probably being hacked right now you don't know it so, and, and that's why it's so important to make sure that whatever you do, you understand, you communicate, collaborate and empower. That's kind of my message here, to make sure that whatever you're doing, you understand it properly, you know why you're doing it and you apply it correctly. And then you communicate that to the whole organization and, and to parties which, who are involved in that. So everyone knows what to follow, what kind of steps to take. And then you work with everyone. You can't be the party pooper just because you're security. You need to collaborate with your team. You need to collaborate with your community. You need to collaborate with your uh, industry. And, and that's really important. And then help each other, empower each other. And, and that's the only way we can win this cyber war. Thank you. And these are some of the ways that you can uh, reach out to me. I'm on LinkedIn and Twitter. Meta Defense Labs in, um, we've got a website, these are some of the websites, and, and I would ask you to join the community as well. If you follow the she sees so page on LinkedIn, there is a link to join the community. We have a Slack community growing now, and uh, lots of fun things happening there. Thank you very much. Any questions?